if you, if you like a lesson, why, please feel free to take one. Raise your hand if you don't have one. The, uh, the guys will get you one. <clears throat> if you haven't figured out by now, you see a lot of the same thing on the slides on the screen. And sometimes the lesson in front of you is going to be a little bit more involved. And sometimes my own lesson sheet has more than you have there. But it gets to be a matter of kind of where God, God leads me during the week and during the, the latter part of the week of what to do with the lesson. So I would ask you to, uh, if you would, turn to Jeremiah uh, chapter 17. And we're going to look this morning a little bit on uh, two areas. One is uh, regarding uh, wise thoughts, you'll see on your outline. And then uh, Paul's example of, of, following, of following Paul I would ask you to pray about this. It's interesting, uh, verse 10 of Philippians 4, et cetera, is going to be regarding and be teaching on contentment. And I, I had to smile when I was reading this the other day of well, how, how appropriate for the month of December, teaching on contentment, which I think, Lord willing, will be next Sunday morning. If you've you're, uh, got your outlines and, you, and, uh, and your Bible open to Jeremiah 17, I want to review it. Most of this should be... I hope uh, fairly common knowledge, but it's good to review some things here regarding the heart. Uh, Jeremiah 17 verse 9 tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now, Brother Doug, you mean my, my heart is really deceitful and desperately wicked? Now, that's what God says. That's, that's how it is. But I'm saved. You still have issues with the heart. Trust me. And as we look at the lesson this morning, you're going to see there's some things you need to do regarding that old heart and the Word of God. Look with me in Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, if you would please, uh, verse number 16. You'll find not only is the heart deceitful and desperately wicked, I can tell a lot about a person by, what's, <laughs> by what they say, by, by their actions, by a lot of things, because it proceeds from the heart. Matthew chapter 15, verse 16, if you'll find your place there with me. And Jesus said in Matthew 15, 16, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? But those things which proceed out of the mouth, look here, come forth from the heart, and, it, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with the unwashed hands defileth not a man. So that which comes forth. <laughs> Anybody have issues, and I'm not, I don't need a handheld this morning, but I think one of the challenges to me since being saved and working in the construction industry is the mouth. Amen? And the mouth in particular in cursing. You hear a lot of it all day long, okay? If you're not careful, it enters in at the ear, and if you're not careful guarding this, it enters into the heart. And you'll find in casual conversation, if you're not careful, you start to sound like construction workers. Brother Doug, are you certain? No, this, this happens. Where you spend your time, who you spend your time with, what you spend your time listening to gets into the heart if you're not careful. And it will come out at the most inopportune time. And so help me, you'll find yourself backing up Brother, I don't know if you ever experienced this or some of you, but you go, Lord, I asked to be a witness today, and instead I'm just the opposite. Why is that? It's the heart. The heart wasn't guarded, the heart wasn't prepared, and you're running on your own energy. It'll come out of the heart if you're not careful. Amen? So follow this lesson this morning. Each of us, self at the top of the list, can use a good dose of this matter of the heart. Now, it says... Uh, on your outline here, it says, do you think where we spend our time, I've alluded to this, what we spend our time listening to, watching, reading, and thinking on can have a direct effect on our heart? That's a yes or no question. Would you say it does? Yeah. I, I think so. If I'm going to spend my time listening to a particular type of music, at some point it begins to affect the heart. If I'm going to spend my time in particular reading certain things, it's going to affect the heart. You can't get around it. Uh, if I'm going to spend my time around certain individuals or certain groups, at some point it affects the heart. Well, Brother Doug, aren't you stronger than that? Actually, no, I need God's help. That's where this lesson, I hope, directs you to this morning. Is At some point you have to realize, no, I, <laughs> I really need God's help. 
because I struggle with some things. I may have company this morning. Now look with me here in verse number, or Proverbs chapter 4. Not only is the heart deceitful and desperate, though wicked, but it's to be guarded. In Proverbs chapter 4, let's turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 4 quickly. In the book of Proverbs chapter 4. I'd ask if you turn, be good listeners, if not, but for Proverbs 4.23. Look what it says here in Proverbs 4.23. You find your place there. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence. Why? For out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Why? For out of it are the issues of life. Think on that just for a minute here. While you're thinking on that, look with me in the book of Psalms chapter 19. The book of Psalms chapter 19. The heart is to be guarded. And, and I will say from personal experience that you let your guard down there and you, you disconnect from your heavenly father and you go about this trying to guard the heart yourself, you're going to lose the battle. You will lose the battle. Not me, brother Doug. You're going to lose the battle. You will. Okay? Trust me on this. God wants you to guard the heart with his help. Psalm chapter 19. Look at me in Psalm chapter 19, reading in verse number 14. Let's, let's back up to verse 12 here. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the words of your mouth are going to be directly affected by the meditation of your heart. If you've been in this class for any length of time at all, where you spend your time, what you spend your time doing, what you spend your time listening to is going to affect the heart. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Very quickly here, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Look with me in verse number 3. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. I have to remind myself, and God does, it absolutely has to remind me, Doug, the battle's spiritual. The battle is spiritual. Okay? But listen, look what it says here in verse number 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Again, the heart is to be guarded. The thought process is to be guarded. Look with me in Philippians. Ah, there's Philippians chapter 4. Look with me in Philippians 4. We're in Philippians 4. A series, but here is in particular, look at me in Philippians 4, verse 8. Here it is. Philippians 4, verse 8. What does it say? It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Ask God to help you throughout the week. You can start right now because I will guarantee it, having sat in this audience many years ago, the mind is prone to wander. Right in the middle of think on these things, my mind is totally on something else sometimes. And here's one more for you. You can be in the middle of teaching a lesson and your mind isn't even focused on it because it's on something else. No way, brother Doug. It happens. Yes, it does. The old flesh is <laughs> it's not happy with some things and Sunday morning's one of those. Okay, and a Bible lesson is right there near the top. So think on these things. Think on those things. Um, let, me, let me read the last part of that. If there be any praise, think on these things. You look at verse number eight. What does that embody? All those different characteristics that we just read. Thinking on all those different things. Pure, virtuous, lovely. Anybody? Anybody awake? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I think of Jesus Christ, okay? He embodies every one of these characteristics, okay? That's a great starting point. It's foundational. So use that throughout the week. Ask God, Lord, should I be looking at this? God, is this, is this virtuous? Is this lovely? Is this being a good report? Is this pure? Lord, help me to think on the right things. Lord, help me to, to fill my mind with the right things this week. 
And I, <laughs> look, we're lazy by nature. I get it, okay? I, I've, I've got a PhD in laziness. <laughs> Te teach this lesson. I know, I know what I should be doing. It's the doing part. Ask God to help you with that. Ask God to give you a little motivation to think on the right things. Um, I grew up with rock and roll in the 70s. I wasn't saved. I can name most of the rock bands back then, knew most of the songs. And I'll tell you what, it's hard to get that out of the head. Even as a 58-year-old today, it's still hard to get it out of the head. And I will find myself revisiting um, Egypt sometimes, reliving the glory days of rock and roll. And I know better, but it gets the old flesh and the foot tapping. Pray for me. But there's some things, when you spend your time with it, it's hard to get it out of the system. So let me challenge you, Christian, this morning. Think on the right things. Ask God for help with it. Now, if you look with me in the book of uh, uh, Psalm chapter 1, uh, Psalm chapter, oh, where are we at here? Psalm chapter 119, there has to be a connection not only with Jesus Christ, but there has to be a connection to the Word of God. Again, where do you spend your time? What do you spend your time thinking on? Who do you spend your time with? Who do you spend your time with, amen, throughout the week? Psalm 119, verse number 11, and let's read verse number 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. I didn't approach the word of God half-heartedly this morning. Does that make sense? I put my heart and soul into it, and God blesses the effort. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Folks, think on the right things this week. Ask God for help with it. Think of Jesus Christ and all that that embodies and encompasses. Think of the word of God. God will help you with it. If we desire his help, I believe he will help us. It's having the right desire, the right attitude. The... Sometimes I know I should be thinking on the right things, but ah, tomorrow. Amen? Ah, I'll get around to that later. God help us in this area of the heart, to guard it. It's to be renewed. Uh, if you look with me in Romans chapter 12, you're sitting in this class this morning, and if you're focused and paying attention, you're, you're in the spirit with your heavenly Father, God is trying to work on your heart, and renew and work on areas. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, you know these. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm thinking of spiritual renewal. I need to be plugged into that source of spiritual renewal. I need it daily, not monthly, not yearly. You're, if, you're, if you're focused this morning and you're in the spirit with God this morning, and you've got your Bible out, and you're reading the word of God, he's trying to do some renewal this morning. He's trying to boot the old out and bring in the new. He's trying to push out that, that old nature of what you're thinking on or been thinking on this past week and renew it to think on the right things. Look with me in Psalm chapter 51. We don't have time to look at all these scriptures. Look with me in Psalm chapter 51. You know King David, man after God's own heart, and yet had his shortcomings as well. But look how, this, look how it's worded here in Psalm 51. Find your place in Psalm 51. Speaking of renewal, look what he asks here in, in uh, verse number 10. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. When I get out of sorts with my heavenly Father, I need things fixed. I can make the attempt or I can go to God in humility and ask God to help me with it to get it right, to get, to get things taken care of. But this matter of, 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 of guarding the heart, folks, things slip in. Things get in there. I have to admit, you can be in the word of God and pray it up and things still slip through. So look with me in Psalm chapter 139 as well. Chapter 139. Find your place in Psalm chapter 139. Look at 23 and 24 here. My best effort in taking care of business with my Heavenly Father, I still miss things. But it says, search me, O God, and, <clears throat> and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, 
and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Listen, folks, the sin that I commit and committed this past week, it's against a holy God. And God has to remind me sometimes that, look, you're not dealing on the horizontal, your life. You're dealing with me. And what you've done or what you thought on or what you didn't do and should have done or where you spent your time, it affects the cause of Christ and the testimony of the Lord. So you have to think about this. We're on the thought process here. And the heart, ask God to search your heart. Lord, that hidden recess over here that I refuse to acknowledge or deal with, Lord, may, may you bring that to mind. Help me to take care of business with you. Guard the heart. It needs to be renewed. Now, 1 Kings, if you look with me in 1 Kings chapter 3, you're familiar with King Solomon. Very quickly in 1 Kings chapter 3. What do you know about King Solomon? What do you remember about King Solomon? 1 Kings chapter 3. You'll find here, I want, we're not going to read this entire portion here, but look at his prayer request. Have you often thought about if God said, request what you will, and I'll answer. I'll, I'll answer your prayer. What, what is it you, what, what's your desire this morning? Let's say, if God I were to ask you, ask me, and I'll answer. Amen? Look what Solomon asked for in verse number 9 here. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart, to judge thy people, that I may, be, look what it says here, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people? God help me to have wisdom to discern between good and bad in my own life. Amen? What a prayer for wisdom, and then that discernment of good and bad. Now, hold that thought. This is an amazing prayer. God blessed them for this. You'll read the rest of this chapter when you have time, but look with me in 1 Kings chapter 11. You know where I'm going with this, but follow along. First Kings chapter 11. Remember the prayer request. And God answered and blessed him with it. Long as you serve me and you're obedient, I'll take care of things, Solomon. Long as you do right. First Kings chapter 11, verse 1. But King Solomon, look what it says here. Love many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely, look what it says here, they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. He had 700 wise princes and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For when it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. His heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. And Solomon, then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives which burn incense and sacrifice unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. Why? Because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wow. Now you go back and you read 1 Kings 3. Look at Solomon's prayer request. Now you go back when you have time and look at 1 Kings 11 in more, in, more, in more depth and study. My, how the mighty have fallen. Amen. But here's what scares, should scare us. That can be us, God's penning the same words. Amen. Yes. Take heed. Amen. Yep. It could be us. And sometimes I'll have to say this. It is me. Okay. But what happened with Solomon? Anybody? What happened? It's all right. It's not a wrong answer, I don't think, this morning. What happened with Solomon? Amazing prayer. His wives. Who said wives? Oh. <laughs> Say that skin, Lily. Wives had certainly an influence, did they not? Turned his heart. Anybody else?
Certainly. The result was what? Yeah. But let's, let's take it a step back, okay? Even take it a step back further. Do you remember the admonition to kings in Deuteronomy chapter 17? Anybody remember at all what that's about? Can, you, can we turn there? Because see, yeah, the, root, the root problem in my life, in Solomon's, and perhaps in others here, when we have issues, is we quit doing something regarding, regarding the heart. Do you, does that make sense? We quit, we quit doing that which God would have us to do. And we open the door, so to speak, of the heart to problems. Okay? Does that make sense? Look with me in, in Deuteronomy chapter 17. You see what I put up here and on your notes. <clears throat> Proverbs you can factor in. Philippians, the thought process you can factor in. But look with Deuteronomy chapter number 17. I want to say this about Solomon. I couldn't hold a candle. No. Mm -mm. So, hopefully I don't sound too rough with Solomon this morning. I couldn't hold a candle to his, to his wisdom in life. But you know what? There's something about, I don't know what it is, that we can know what to do. And, and why in the old age does it fail? Why in the last lap do people quit doing what they should be doing? That scares me sometimes because Solomon has been around a little while now, okay? But what happens? Look with me to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse number 14. You find your place there? When thou art come in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me like as all nations that are about me, thou shalt, set, thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among the brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, to the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord hath said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply... What? Wives, wives, plural, amen, uh, wives to himself. Why? That his heart turn not away, neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him. Oh, and here's the important part. You can have it on the coffee table. You can have it on your shelf. You can even have it on the seat of your car with good intentions of bringing it and reading it in church. But here's the key to this. And he shall read therein all the days of his life. Why? That he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left to the end, that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of of Israel. Can we just cut to the chase this morning? When there's issues in my life or your life spiritually, it's usually not the wife that's created it, <gasps> or the husband, or the children, or the pastor, or the deacons, or the church members. It's, it's God's people. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you with this lesson on Deuteronomy 7? God's people simply quit, quit doing what they know they're supposed to be doing. They get out of the Word of God, they get away from God. And the old nature says, it's everybody else's fault. All those wives. Amen? No. Solomon, look at his prayer in 1 Kings 3. Wow. To discern between, and in his old age, he no longer could, he no longer could distinguish right and wrong. Folks, that can be me. That could be us. Okay? This is the adult class. Some of us are getting up there. I'll leave it at that. But listen, I don't, want to be, I don't want to be the one in the last chapter of, of Christian service of there is no service because of blank, right? I just, Brother Doug just simply quit doing what he, what he was teaching on, what he knew to, 
to, to do right, okay? So Solomon is a great study. You might think about this too. If anybody should have known about issues in leadership, it should have been Solomon. Who was his dad? David. Amen? Yeah. If anybody should have known, dad should have explained a few things to the son. Huh? Especially in a position of leadership. Now, look with me in Philippians chapter uh, 4. We're running out of time quick here, but look with me in Philippians 4. Folks, guard the heart. Ask God for help with that. Guard the thought process. Be in the right things, around the right people, around the right music, around the right reading, however you want to look at it this morning. But be in the Word of God in particular. Now, Philippians chapter 4, verse 9 you find your place there in Philippians 4, 9, speaking of the Apostle Paul here, the example of Paul. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Back up to chapter 3, if you would please, verse number 17. Philippians three seventeen. Brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walks as ye have us for an example. Now, we can learn about someone else by listening to what they have to say, watching how they do things, observing how they interact with others, and by implementing what you've learned from them. Hey, this really does work. Just as you said it would. Praise God. Now, being an independent fundamental Baptist, I put a note down here. <laughs> Some folks won't lead. They refuse to lead. But here's what's worse. They won't follow either. <gasps> a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, James chapter 1. So I want you to think with me just for a minute here. There's some characteristics that make for a good follower. And Christ would have us to follow him ultimately, okay? So these apply to following Christ as well. You might say the Apostle Paul is pretty brassy saying, follow me. But you follow this up in, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, follow me as I follow Christ, okay? But I want you to think about this for a minute here. If you're one of those that refuses to lead... Please be a follower at least. Okay? Yeah. See, it doesn't help the cause of Christ just to sit and watch the pray go by, refusing to lead or follow. Okay? The world's full of folks like that. They're at work. They're at school. They're wherever. At least be a follower. At least be in a position where God could use you in the ministry in the capacity of being a support type of person. Does that make sense? Some folks just simply refuse to lead. But what makes it worse than Christianity is praise God they refuse to follow either. So think with me here for just a minute here. There's some characteristics that make for a good follower. One is the desire to be used of God. Lord, use me in some capacity. Please, Lord, while there's time, use me in some capacity. Whether it's ushering, whether it's singing, whether it's cleaning, whether it's whatever it is, being an encouragement to God's people, use me in some capacity. One of the key characteristics of being a good follower is having a desire to be used of God. Look at me in 2 Corinthians very quickly here. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We'll probably have to ask you to finish up the lesson on your own time. But 2 Corinthians chapter 8, look with me here. In verse number 1 it says, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded under the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they are willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Yes, what's the first characteristic of being a good follower? A desire to be used of God. Yeah. Well, and then listen, it's a desire to be used of God where God would use you. Yes. What's the second one we have listed here? A good listener pays attention to what's going on. I can explain something this morning from the Word of God, but folks, if we don't simply listen, we're going to miss it. 
Those of you that work teaching young welders, what's the key? Pay attention. Right here. <laughs> You're drifting. No, it's not time to smoke a cigarette. Nasty habit. You ought to quit it anyway. Now get your mind over here. Amen? Yes. Teaching young inspectors. It's like if you can just get them off the phone for two minutes, amen, and focus on the work at hand, it, the world would be revolutionized. Be a good listener, James chapter 1. Be swift to hear. Be swift to hear. Here's another one, a teachable spirit, Acts chapter 18. Some folks, praise the Lord, you can't teach them nothing. Amen? But to be a good follower, you have to have a teachable spirit. I don't have all the answers at 58. I don't expect to have all the answers by the day I'm, I, I pass on. Amen? But by the grace of God, I'm going to have, I, by the grace of God, have a teachable spirit. Acts chapter 18. If you look very quickly here, Acts chapter 18, uh, verse number 24, and a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in a synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Now there right here you have to stop and say, you know what, Apollos could have made a choice, said, you know what, I'm an eloquent speaker, and I've got a pretty good handle on the word of God, I don't need any more teaching. I don't want to hear it. But what's interesting about Apollos, even though this man, I think he, he you know, there's just eloquent speaking, he wasn't so proud that he couldn't listen and be taught. So very quickly in closing here, he began to speak boldly in synagogues, and when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. In closing, a desire to be used of God's key. A good listener. Pay attention. A teachable spirit. A willingness to be reproved or corrected. Boy, we don't like to be corrected sometimes, but the word of God will. Amen. The word of God will correct if you're willing to let. If you, Because what does it say here? A submissive will, learning to yield, and then doing what you've learned to do. You can leave this class today on this matter of guarding the thought, the heart. It's up to you, between you and your Heavenly Father, to take care of business. I can't do it for folks. You can't do it for me. Are we supposed to blindly follow somebody? I'd ask you to look at these scriptures. Ultimately, we're to be following Christ. Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Folks, we're out of time this morning. I trust the lesson has been a blessing to you. I don't think we'll come back to this, but hold on to it. Finish the lesson yourselves this week. I think it's a good challenge to do as a class. We're going to be looking at contentment. A lot of discontentment in America today. A lot of discontentment. But there's a lot of discontentment among God's people too. Let's stand with we'll dismissal dismiss with a word of prayer.